Hey guys, we are live from Blue Ridge Farm. Just trying to get my camera organized. Ugh. Okay, I, th I think that's okay. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys have all had a great week. Um, a lot of exciting things are happening. Um, let's, we've been doing some, a, a lot more filming. So we're going to have a new fundamental mini course for everybody. So that will be really fun. Um, a lot of things that we just always need to cover and a lot of things that are incredibly important. We've sort of gonna put all together. Um, also, I think with the seat lecture, so be on the lookout for that, that would be really fun. And then um, what else were we doing? Oh, well, okay, so funny story. I was getting ready for my lecture tonight about, um, we're going to do a series, which I think is going to be pretty cool. We're going to do a series of riding your horse sound. And it's going to start like, first we're going to talk about longitudinal flexion and why it's important to be on the bit. And then I think the next month we're going to go into balance and why that's important and equitation and how to aid for all the lateral work. Then it goes into what lateral work benefits what in the body, um, cross training. Um, so yeah, so we kind of decided to make a series and um, I was all ready to go tonight. Of course, the girls that helped me were like, can we tell you every week that you need to be ready a week early? <laughs> so that was funny. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna, we're, we're gonna give me false deadlines so that they can get all the information on time. Um, but I'm really excited about it. And it honestly made me ride and teach even better today because, you know, we're just talking about why it's so important for your horse to be round and on the bit. It's like fundamental number one of like, how to help our horses carry us without causing pain and discomfort. I mean, it is like so important. Um, I don't, I just see Kelly just got on here. Hey. Um, because on last Monday, we had a really great tack room chat. Um, Ashley and Kelly did an awesome job um, talking about um, one of my favorite videos. And actually it was Allie Brock's, one of her favorite videos too, was the Montana uh, on the bit, waiting and yielding. Uh, that was one of her favorites. So um, Ashley and Kelly talked about that. And I thought that was just full of really great information. Um, thank you, Kelly and Ashley for doing such a great job. And I, you know, everybody in the academy can look at those. They are under the lesson library, tack room chats, um, check out what the girls had to say. They answer all your questions. Um, I answer all the questions under the videotapes, um, which is fun and I really enjoy that. But the girls, um, if you really want to like talk back and forth with somebody, that's a really great avenue for everybody. And that's open for everybody. Um, the lectures are only for apprentices and trainers, but you will be able to purchase those um, also separately. So that's really fun. Big announcement. We have Charles DeComfy coming, who is my mentor. And he, I mean, he's traveling. So I was like, well, I mean, if you are traveling, you need to travel over here. So he's going to be here in Landrum, South Carolina, November 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. Um, we're going to do two days, kind of a private clinic, and then two days instructor seminar. So if you are interested, leave a message here, or you can Facebook message me. Um, whatever is easiest for you. You can text me if you want to text. Um, but we're really excited about that. And we'll do social distancing and everything will be safe. Uh, we've got a big indoor, so there's going to be lots of space. We're going to need demo riders. Um, there's going to be awesome lectures. It'll be open to auditors. So we're going to have like participants that are like instructors or want to really um, participate in, on that level. You don't have to be an instructor. You can just want to be a fabulous amateur. You know, you don't have to be a professional. Um, and then we'll have like non-participating auditors who can, you know, just not be quite as involved. So look out for announcements of that. Keep inviting your friends and family to Team Tate TV. 
because we are still going to give away some nice um, for the, I think, the 4,000th person and the person who uh, invites them free access to the academy. And we are in Israel. We are in um, Australia. We are in Denmark. Like, let everybody know. Like, we are just so excited about the academy and, and love it so much. Um, speaking of that, we're going to do a Bon Voyage 2020 tour. I'm going to start uh, now that we're like able to travel safely and, you know, I'm not flying yet, but I do feel pretty comfortable driving and I do feel like if I can stay away from people and we've got a special, um, way to do things at clinics, I feel definitely more, um, comfortable doing that. So, um, I'm going to start at Meg Dishler's, go to Katie Hiller's, move on to Paulina at Equestrian Events, go to Heidi's from there. So that's like all within Wisconsin and Illinois. And then I'm going to drive down and I'm going to have two days at Laura Burkett's in Kentucky and then drive a little farther down to Knoxville and be at Teresa Shapers. But we'll add a whole list down there and you guys can hopefully um, come. We're going to have some pretty awesome swag bags for people. Um, I was thinking to do most improved of each day and then... I was going to do a best dress because show chic loves to give out stuff. But then I thought maybe I should be like the worst dressed because then I can help them get cute stuff from show chic. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we thought about doing too. Um, during that week, it's also going to be our last launch of the year. So the first week of December, perfect timing to get Christmas presents, uh, invite your clients, invite your trainer, um, it's a great place to be. It's a really fun group, great educational videos. Um, there's just like so much content to cover and, um, I, I just love sharing. So, um, yeah. So I hope you join the Academy and that'll be fun. Um, tonight we are going to talk about, I, I put Sid, our little working student. I know she's on here. Hey Sid. I put her on the spot like I do every Wednesday and I'm like, Sid, Sid, what should I talk about? And uh, she was really gunning for the self-worth talk like the week before. So I had to disappoint her that time. But we did get to it last week. So if you didn't watch last week, it was really good about self-worth and how everybody works through it. And hopefully gave you some good techniques to maybe help yourself uh, get a little bit more confident, believe in yourself, you know, all those good stuff. So, But tonight, because tomorrow we are actually leaving for regionals. And so um, kind of competition was on my mind. And then Sid texted me and she's like, how about what do you do like mentally to prepare for a successful horse show? Like really even just like an hour out. Uh, and I thought that was great. Um, and I told her, I'm like, I was just riding around thinking the same thing too of like, how do you set yourself up for a successful show? So one of the main things I tell always all my people and I do for my own horses is to make things extremely consistent. So when you take the horse away from home, you've changed its herd, you've changed its environment, you've put it on a trailer, like the whole thing is a little bit stressful. Um, I want that horse to be able to not only rely on the consistency of my riding, but also the consistency of my program so that the horse can be in my presence and be like, whew, thank goodness, like, I know what we're doing. We do this every day. If I walk for 20 minutes, I walk at the show for 20 minutes. If I do 10 minutes hand walking, I will do 10 minutes at the horse show hand walking. Um, absolutely everything remains completely the same. So I think that's important to, you know, think about when you take your horse into this unknown environment and you want him to perform his best. Like there is, there is the idea that you have to set him up for this, for his success. And I want the horse to really be able to rely on, oh yes, we're, oh, whew, we're doing the same exact thing we did yesterday and the day before that and the day before that and, you know, whatever. The go on and on. So 
that is a way that my horses can really relax and they're not going to be very relaxed because we're at a horse show. We're not going to be very relaxed because we are, you know, wanting to do our best and we put all this pressure on us and all these crazy things. So you want to do as like the same with you, like you want to be able to rely on the same program as well. Like I always think about the gymnasts, like these little 13, 14 year old girls that are doing their floor exercises. And I'm like, how is that kid not totally nervous knowing that this floor routine is going to win her the, the medal or not? Like that's just like blows my mind. And they're just like, they, they, they sit, they like do their breath and they run and do their tumbling line. And you know, then they get interviewed because they win and it's so exciting. And then they get interviewed and they're like, we have done this routine so often. I could do it in my sleep. I could do it in my sleep. These kids know this so well that they just can do it. They just rely, they go into a different place in their brain that they can rely on that. And they do what they know how to do. And we have to in a little bit create that same sense for ourselves, but also for our horses. Like, hey, you got this, like no, no big deal. Um, so I definitely think that that is a, that's a, that's a big thing. And one of the main parts about that too, is I want to have time to be able to do that. Like the only thing that really makes me nervous is to be like running behind schedule. Like, Oh my God. And then if I, if I typically walk 15 minutes, but Oh, now I'm running behind schedule. I'm only going to walk 10 that that five minutes might be the difference, you know? And so we've got to, as Conrad Schumacher would always say, we have to control the controllables. You can control what time you are ready to get on. You can control that you've done all the things like you lunge, like you do at home or you hand walk or you walk on a long rain or whatever. You can control that. And so there's a lot of pieces we can't control. We can control that the weather is terrible and we can't control that the judges may be late. I mean, that's very rare that that happens, but I mean, that happens. I, that has happened. So, you know, you can't control that like someone else's horse, like is acting up or getting loose or something crazy is happening. Can't control that, but you can control being as prepared as you possibly can. So you can control what time you get on. And so the only thing that ever like makes me nervous is that like I'm running behind schedule. And so it's important to really take that time and plan like the night before I will write down my schedule exactly. Yes, exactly. The dragon lady, Kelly, dragon lady comes out. You do not want to see that because uh, I'm nervous. I'm like, eh, you know, but I want to know exactly what I need to do, exactly when I need to do it. So I write down like everything. I am getting up. I am um, feeding. I am braiding. I'm hand walking. I am grooming, you know, or whatever. Like sometimes I'm not grooming my own horses, but then like that's written in there that that horse is to be groomed. Like for me, it's really important to have it all like organized out and really strict follow like sometimes is and if, if, you know you guys know me now so I am a talker so you know I see somebody and then I'm chit chatting and then like oh, I have to stay on my schedule and so um you know sometimes lunch is built in but like sometimes it's not but I um drink up a special protein shake which is amazing by the way if anybody wants any info about that it's changed my life I love it um message me um, but like everything is planned, you know, I don't like surprises. I don't like to be late, um, at a horse show. Like I'm, I always kind of run late in my life. Kind of, I'm working on that, but at a horse show, it like makes me nervous. So I think that's important to also, like I just said to Richard the other day, I'm like, Richard, we don't plan to fail. We fail to plan. <laughs> And uh, it was just kind of a funny situation, but it's the same. It's the same for a horse show. I also think it's important to like hand walk. Like I hand walk the horses 
everywhere all the time. Um, when I used to be showing summer, it was sometimes not hand walking. Sometimes it was like hand passaging and hand leaping, but that was only sometimes. Sometimes she was good, but walking with the coffee and the horse, that kind of never worked. Um, but my geldings are a lot easier than that. Um, but I hand walk a ton. I also hand walk them around the arena before the show. Um, and it's interesting because when we do a lot of CDIs in Florida, we really uh, work the horses and school them a little bit or tack walk them around the arena in the morning. And so funny, funny story. Um, and, and good to know, good information right here. If you guys want to see the best riders in Wellington, come to the showgrounds between 6.30 and 7.30 in the morning because everyone is riding. You will see 25 of the best riders preparing, you know? And so, um, I've sort of kept that into when I show my Grand Prix horses, not CDIs. I want to just do the same routine. So I used to always hand walk everybody, um, but some of the horses will get ridden, you know, in the morning as well. So it kind of depends on their fitness, depends on their personality. Uh, it kind of depends, but um, we walk a lot. You know, if your horse is used to turnout, you should get it out of its stall like a lot. I mean, we want to attempt to keep everything as normal for that horse as possible, you know? So... I try to recreate everything for that horse as if we were at home, which is where they're the most comfortable and calm. Um, what else do I do? Um, I think if you need to lunge, give yourself time, plan that in. We always have like foot in the stirrup time is what we call it. So it is like the horse needs to be ready to go uh, lunge or it needs to be ready to walk out of the barn, but then there is like foot in the stirrup, hard limit, hard hard stop right there. So I think that's really important that you really organize your, your time and like know how far away the lunging arena is, like plan it all out. Nobody likes surprises ever. Sid says, I find an open space to hand walk my test, think through everything I want in that test. This girl, I tell you, she is our actual real working student. Um, so she works her butt off in our barn and she is totally awesome. And such a thoughtful young lady. It's just, I love it. So that is a huge piece, Sid. And I would say like the night before, I'm a big visualizer. I firmly believe in positive self-talk. I firmly believe in visualization and how your brain can't actually discern if you actually did it or if you visualize doing it. Like your brain just thinks you did it. So I, I feel the ride. I see where I'm going. I ride what I need to do. I practice where I shorten my reins. I adjust my leg in this corner. I make sure these things are happening. Like it is like, not just like, oh, where do I go? It is like fully riding through the whole thing. And just like Sid was saying, thoroughly think about exactly what you're going to do. My students, I would make them retell me the test. And then I would like make them retell me out loud what they're going to think about during each thing like where are they going to shorten their reins like how many of us have been riding the test and the freaking reins are getting long and then just just goes bad it just goes downhill from there because the reins are not short enough um and so it's important to even like i make them like write it out sometimes even to like a, a little diagram and then i make them put a little x where they're going to shorten their reins you know like trot in halt salute C track right, MXK, medium trot, K collected trot, shorten the reins. I mean, it makes a big difference because it isn't just like, you're not just steering, you know, you're doing like so many things, so many things that you have to like plan it out. Like as if it was like, okay, at B, I need to do a 10 meter circle. 
Well, in the corner between K and A, I have to shorten my reins. Like sometimes I make them even like memorize it as a movement because it's so important to get that uh, ability to keep remembering to do things like that. Uh, another thing, I always braid my own horses. When, they're, when I'm showing five, it gets a little bit, gets a little hairy, but uh, I just get up earlier <laughs> and do it. Because like for me, what's really important is that I want to feel, oops, sorry, bug. Um, I want to know what that horse is feeling that day. I want to kind of get a sense of what mood he's in. And then I wrangle anybody who's close by so they can uh, retell me the test. I already know it. I memorize, I have all the tests memorized. Like I know, I know where I'm going, but in that moment, I'm kinesthetically feeling my horse. I'm inside his energy field. I get a sense of what mood he's in. And then I'm, I'm connecting with him. And then like someone is just telling me the test and I could just flow through it because I've already gone through it very deep, what am I doing? What am I thinking about? What do I need to remember here? You know, this really like just focus and do it. There's so many things that we have to, uh, it's, a, it's an exercise of concentration and being able to focus. So I always um, braid myself. I just, I, I love it. And um, it's great connection time with my horses. I would also say I, um, like right before I get on, like there's like focused, like, like go time, you know, that it's like there's, and, and I played a lot of sports. So there was always this like team huddle, get in close, hands in, and then like ready, let's do it, you know, and then it's go time. Um, and I do that a little bit with my horses as well, but um, there's like a zen and like a grounding, a breathing. I do a little yoga, but I sit in the chair, like right before I'm going to go get on. I like sit in the chair in the tack room. I just erase everyone out of my mind. I sit and I ground myself in my concentration to completely show up as clearly as I can and remember what I want from this test. Um, I also make my riders sort of come up with three words that if someone was watching them ride or things that they've been working on personally, I want them to repeat those three words. Um, could be like powerful, harmonious, energetic. You know, it could be calm, smooth, um, connection. Like you can come up with your own three words, but it's, it's kind of fun that like, what would the impression be if someone were to look at you, wa watching you ride your test, what would you want them to see? Like, what would you want the, the main message to come across of like, I'm stressing my horse or I love my horse or I'm too easy on my horse or I don't really care if I win or win or die. You know, it's like whatever who you are, like comes out in everything. Um, but it's also a little bit, you know, you always wish you could ride past a judge's booth and slip them a little piece of paper to say like six weeks ago, this was not going like this. So just being here is a big win. I'm just saying, you know, you wish you could tell the judges that, but you, do, you can't and uh, they don't care. They're judging against the ideal. And so, you know, they don't really care if the horse was throwing his head up in the canter depart a month ago. And you're like, yes, this is happening. It's so much better. Um, they, they're judging against, you know, a 10. And so um, for me, sometimes I pick up my own words that not even caring what someone else is going to think about it, but what I want to portray to that horse. Um, balance, confidence, flow. You know, I mean, and I, I just think it's really fun sometimes to think about each of your horses and come up with your own three words. So um, that's kind of a fun, I always make everybody like write stuff down and text it to me and 
tell me what what it is because it gets you in a certain mind mindset and a mind frame like if i'm like i need to get this but my words are like harmony partnership ease that's going to completely change the way i'm coming at that horse uh, and for me that's extremely helpful because i can get intense and i've worked very hard on not riding like at the horses um, and really with the horses um, so coming up with these words and repeating those to myself are always um, really helpful um, yeah and i think that's i think that's about it and then i i have down on my notes um eula when i was in hungary he always made me aware of this of like why not just be great? Why not concentrate enough to know the test by memorizing? Um, also, like, why not just be great? Do everything you can to set the whole thing up for success. Ooh, and Sh Cerise has a great question. How far ahead of the show do you practice a test at home and how often? Great question. It really depends on the horse, but... I would say about two weeks out, there is a different type of like mental game of like show prep. Because I do feel like during my training time, I call it, I'm putting deposits in the bank. I'm putting money in the bank. I am making that horse strong. I am making that horse confident. I'm making him like super chewy on both sides of the reins. I'm putting my money in the bank. And when I go to the horse show, I'm on a spending spree. <laughs> so I want that horse to give me everything he's got. The most power, the most softness, the most bend, the most collection. And so there is a little slow build, like two weeks out before the competition. So I don't like go to the show and like freak, it, freak the horse out like, oh my God. The standard change today. You know, I think I, I used to do that. <laughs> so I'm also conscientious to not like, you need to be extra special today. It matters today. Like excellence matters every day. And excellence is about practicing great content every day. So I definitely uh, work on that every day. And so I do strive to be excellent every single day. But there is a little bit sharpening that goes on about two weeks before. Like if I share a horse with a client and I'm going to show it, I only ride it for the two weeks up coming up to that horse show. Because we spend a lot of money, we're investing a lot of time to go to this horse show. So why not be great? Why not just be great? So I want to set the horse up that it's a slow build of like finding that elite level of energy output and also concentration for the horse. And so I never want to get to the show and all of a sudden like I've changed my intensity level. It's, it's, a, it's a show prep. Um, I would say for my Grand Prix horses, I really like space it out of like when am I going to do my test I back up from there, then I probably practice the test. I back up from there. So not every day is like, you need to do the Grand Prix again today. Mm, you know, it's, it's like practice a test, see where I'm at, work three days on the things I want to improve. Um, I need the one-time tempies to start easier. Um, I need more engagement in the extended trot. Um, but I'm not going to tackle all of those things all on the same day. And I'm not going to do it over and over and over again, because by the time I get to the horse show, the horse is going to be spent. I've already spent all my money, none left to go to the horse show. Cause I've just been like squeezing, squeezing, squeezing everything out. And I want to kind of build it up before. So I peak actually at the show. So that is great. I think for my young horses, everyone always laughs at this, but this is actually true. When I take a young horse to a horse show, I want to stay on and I want to stay in. 
the ring because that is hard to do and y'all laugh but uh, I have been bucked off in the horse show in the show ring so which is also a lot of the reasons why like I don't get that nervous anymore because it's like uh, that's happened so you know what's your greatest fear oh getting bucked off in the middle of the test okay well that happened and everybody the sun came up the next day so it was fine um, but my young horses, I want to get them actually a little familiar with the pieces of the test. I want them to know where they're going. Um, I want to feel how much movement versus balance, like where is that special shift? Cause I never want to push my horses over their sense of balance because that affects their confidence. And I am never going to risk my horse's confidence to get a good score. Like the development of the horse is the most important thing for me. And it's confidence in himself, his confidence in me, his pride to do what I'm asking because he feels prepared. Um, I never want to exploit the horse's good nature um, I want to build it up. So we're both really proud of what we bring to the horse show. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that's about it. Everybody be safe out there. Wear a mask at the horse shows. Um, I did bring wine. I forgot to have a toast in the beginning, but got my dressage at Devon. So cheers to a good horse show this week. Um, look for the Bon Voyage 2020 tour. It's the first time I'm going to like teach lessons like on like consecutive days while I'm on the road. So um, it should be fun and interesting. I'm going to have to pack pack a couple different suitcases, but uh, that will be really fun. Um, so yeah, we leave for regionals tomorrow. I wish everybody good luck and yeah, I will see you soon. So make it a great rest of your night. Bye.